first of all, I would like to thank the uh, chairman who gave me a, a nice introduction. Secondly, I would like to thank uh, Brazilian friends, my colleagues in the uh, UFRN, who uh, put the nice picture and the, the, my CV into the, the, the conference uh, agenda, the, the booklet. Okay, my name is uh, Yang Hua Wen. I'm a, a fellow of uh, uh, Lawyer Academy of Engineering and uh, a chair uh, in geophysics at the Imperial College in London for the last uh, uh, 20 years. So I'm also a director of uh, Resource Geophysics Academy. This uh, is an institution I uh, established uh, four or five years ago. My presentation consists of uh, basically five parts. The part one will be uh, rational or motivation. The part two, I will uh, talk about our serial neural network. Uh, I think most people here uh, are familiar with uh, uh, new, uh, machine learning, but uh, maybe some of them not. So I try to use uh, not the mathematical uh, rigorous theory to, to explain. I try to use uh, like a banded practical theory to explain that, to, uh, to possibly to convince uh, geoscientists. That's actually is quite a useful uh, concept. And, uh, uh, in, in which I also uh, introduce uh, versus uh, distance for the, for the specific case in this uh, study. Then I talk about uh, the FDRI with uh, this uh, so-called network regularization. Uh, after I show some, uh, one of our uh, examples, and I will emphasize, uh, highlight uh, the number of uh, features of this uh, proposed method. So part one, rational. Uh, when we're talking about anisotropic uh, FWI, we must involve for several parameters simultaneously. The simplest example here is, uh, consists of three parameters, vertical velocity, VP0, and uh, anisotropic parameters, epsilon and the delta. Okay, I do not explain the physical meaning of this, but it's basically two parameters. Objective function in the sizing wind version is usually defined by the data misfit between uh, the observed sizing wind data, the opus, and the calculated the data. So the objective is to try to minimize the difference between the D ops and the D calculated data. So that's the, uh, the ultimate objective of uh, emotion. However, there are at least two problems. Problem one, the crosstalk effect. So one parameter could be uh, inertially updated to uh, correct the data misfit actually caused by another parameter. So that's called a closed uh, talk effect. We do know in the FWA uh, inversion, the data misfit cannot be eliminated in a single step. And that the solution is always uh, approximation and it must be uh, determined by iteration. That's the practice. However, the iteration does not help to uh, suppress the crosstalk effect. So I emphasize that. The second problem is uh, the insensitivity. The insensitivity of a data misfit with, with respect to the anisotropic parameters. Right? In the subsequent emotion, the do dominant parameter uh, is the vertical velocity VP0. So at least there are two problems. Practically, we often 
include a model space regularization into the, the objective function. Okay, so instead of a single data mix objective here, but also we have uh, the model space regularization. In between, uh, there's, there's a coefficient here, that's a trade-off which controls the contribution of this term and this term, right? That's, that's a that simple mathematical representation here. Fundamentally, Sassimi inversion is a uh, uh, ear post and that requires a proper regularization. That's where we are uh, able to produce a well-behaved model estimate. That's the uh, inversion. So in Sassimi inversion, the regularization term is usually derived from uh, well lobs. That's the uh, common practice. Let's talk about uh, some uh, existing methods for uh, the model regularization. The very uh, common one is uh, L2 norm regularization. This is uh, the difference between a prior model and uh, the current estimation. So you, you try to minimize uh, the difference. So, so every time you try to minimize the model update, amount of model update, okay? P equals two here uh, represents the L2 norm. You can also use a different value here, but uh, L2 norm is quite a, uh, uh, often used because it's a, they have a uh, convenience when we're talking about how to uh, minimize this objective function, which means uh, do the uh, calculate the gradient this term. This uh, uh, model uh, prior uh, can be obtained from a well log interpretation. That's uh, practice. And uh, here, the inverse of a matrix CM is the inverse of a physically, it's an uncertainty of the, the model prior. So model prior is not necessarily the true model. The some part of uh, uh, parameters are uh, well, because of uh, noise or because of uh, measurement uh, limitations, there's uh, some uncertainties. So that's the inverse of that. So basically, this term is uh, the certainty, in together it's a certainty with regards to individual uh, parameter. I can show you a, a, a toy example, just like a, uh, for this error 2 norm. Here, this is a, a prime model, what well, may be based on the uh, seismic data analysis, uh, velocity analysis, you get, the, for example, the velocity model. But uh, we do have like uh, two wells, one's here, one's here. In between two wells, you may have a high sensitivity, and uh, uh, to the uh, left or the right, there's a new well, so maybe it's a low uh, sensitivity, which means high uh, uncertainty. In the implementation, we require to uh, constr construct this M prime, and uh, also need to estimate the CM, right? Both uh, tasks are very difficult, and uh, this both tasks uh, need uh, expertise to, to build. Another example, greatly related to the, what I'm talking about today, is uh, the statistical uh, regularization. We try to measure the difference between probability of the well parameter and uh, the probability of the model parameter. So this uh, will try to measure the uh, difference between these two probabilities. Sometimes it's called the relative uh, entropy, right, which is measures a uh, relative distance between the two probability uh, distributions. For this method, first of all, we need to make assumption about the form of uh, those two distributions. For example, we can use, assume they are in the Gaussian form. And then uh, uh, we need to fit the uh, P model to the P well with this assumed distribution. However, it is very difficult to fit a distribution use a data samples. We only have a limited samples, right? It's not the proper uh, probability. So this leads to uh, the presentation I gave you today. So the proposed method here, we measure 
uh, versus the distance between the two probabilities instead of uh, uh, just a measure uh, divergence, but here it's a versus distance. So, so this, uh, I put an N here, this uh, represents a net neural network. So this regression term actually is uh, data driven based on the, the data uh, properties. And, and uh, the one of the properties of this method is there's no assumptions about uh, the distribution form. Therefore, it works for uh, complex distributions. It's not necessarily like, uh, like a sing single normal distribution. Uh, this method, I emphasize, that we use uh, a neural network training to, to uh, obtain this W here. Okay, it's not a new, simple numerical calculation. The part two, uh, we're talking about adversarial uh, neural network and uh, the uh, versus the, uh, distance. Uh, assume we have a, a data distribution, P data here. Now we, we try to uh, generate a distribution we call the uh, PG, G is a uh, generative uh, model, generative model. So we try to make this distribution close to the data distribution. In between, if we use a neural network, we just call the loss function, basically equivalent to the inversion uh, terminology, we call uh, objective function, right? That's the loss function here. Practically, it's very difficult to write out P data because this uh, could be very uh, complex and uh, very high dimensional, right? So that's uh, difficult. If we assume this uh, some, f some sort of form for the P data, for example, we can assume uh, uh, the, the P data is in the Gaussian, right? And the PG, this substitution will lead to a uh, fitting error because this is actually not really a Gaussian form, right? So that's uh, understandable. The adversarial neural network use a network training to learn the distance between these two. Uh, I do not as have an assumption about the form uh, of a distribution, but we just calculate so called the, the distance here. Versus 10 distance, W here, between these two, uh, model, uh, two distributions. So, for uh, understand this distance, let's see uh, the, the cartoon here. Basically, this uh, is a uh, measures. The, this uh, uh, a pile of uh, earth, right? We move, and another pile of earth, we try to make, make sure if we are move this pile of earth to here, and they build up the, the pile in this shape. So that's the earth movement distance. You know, we do the bit by bit the movement. So this is the, uh, the concept of uh, the W distance, okay? So mathematically, it's a minimum cost for transforming the one part of us into another one. That's the concept, right? So the earth pile here, we can think about uh, as uh, the probability distribution. So that means we try to measure the minimal difference between these two distributions. So FWI wants to uh, find that a, a find a model which have a minimal W value here. That's the concept. Mathematically, it uh, uh, should be represented in, in this way. I, I think it's difficult for people to first time to see that. Let me explain that. First of all, here is a difference between the two types of parameters. One is model parameters, one is a well uh, samples. And uh, here, E here is expectation, but the math basically is uh, uh, in the, in the uh, practice, you can just do the, the average of this uh, result. Okay? So the physical meaning of this formula here, right, but we assume this uh, M model and the M will, they have a joined distribution we call the gamma, 
From this joint distribution, we can select a pair of a model sample and a, and a well sample. And then uh, the distance between these two samples is measured by L1 norm. So if we have uh, enough pairs of samples are uh, selected from the gamma, and then uh, we, we, we have an expectation and measured by L1 norm. Finally, the W, the distance here is defined as a uh, mathematical uh, uh, infimum, infimum uh, of the such an expectation over all possible joint distribution. That is the uh, physical meaning of that formula. We already feel it's difficult to understand this formula, and that practically it's also difficult to implement in the computer. So, what we do, we try to use an alternative form of uh, this distance that's best known, so called, uh, the one with the properties called the du uh, duality. Instead of we measure the difference of the two samples, we measure the difference of the functions. Okay? So instead of we use a uh, infinite, infinite really means uh, the, the lower limit. But here, we try to measure the difference between these two functions and uh, use uh, uh, supreme, which is an uh, upper limit. Where we turn uh, lower limit problem into an upper limit problem, right? So that's uh, easy for the, for the implementation. So here the function can be any function that satisfies the so-called uh, so one uh, Lipschitz uh, continuity. I will explain this. Basically, uh, the one uh, Lipschitz, Lipschitz uh, continuity is uh, we call the normalized, the normalized uh, distribution function, a uh, probability function. Okay, but we, if we write uh, numerically, we can say for any pair of uh, uh, x1, x2, the the function difference will be smaller or equal to one. That's the the one came from here. Okay, for the Lipschitz. Okay. So now, we go back to this formula. So this equation itself states that if we input m well and m, that, uh, m model to such a function f, we got an output from this formula, right? We have uh, input all f, uh, possible f functions. We could have a uh, uh, obtain the all output values, but it's just impractical. We cannot do that, right? So the W, the w distance is defined as uh, the uh, supreme of uh, all these values. As I said, we cannot do that practically. So what do we do here? The idea here is to use a neural network D to represent F here so that we can continuously change D to find the, the maximum output value. Instead, of we will find extremely every F function, but we just use a D here, but the D is a continuous function, and then we, we change the D, we can find the maximum. That's the, the idea here. Therefore, we can rewrite this formula. First of all, use D to uh, approximate f. Secondly, because we have uh, one uh, Lipschitz uh, continuity uh, requirement here, so we change, we transfer this into into this form here, right? Because this one said uh, smaller uh, or equal to one, so here this difference smaller or equal to one. So let's see this formula first. This formula, if you remember, definition here, we try to find the minimal distance, right? But for the calculation purposes, we try to, we, now we can generate the maximum, maximum uh, function here. So how will we calculate the maximum? So basically we try to have, uh, to keep this, uh, the model 
which are from a well log, maximum. So we want to minimize this. You have a model generated by FWI, but this have a minimal uh, value. But also, because minus here, also have a minimal wear here. Minimal means, well, extreme minimal here is zero, right? So that means the differential here should be close to one, right? So basically, if we're talking about a function, we try to generate this function uh, almost uh, at the values between, uh, between zero and the one, all right? Because we're talking about distribution, we're always uh, talking about positive values. So let's try to get this one close to one. That's the concept. So the implementation here uh, consists of five steps. First one, we train a network, D here, to uh, maximize this uh, loss function. So this is uh, treated as a loss function. OK. And uh, this M hat here, basically, is a random uh, linear uh, interpolation. Because uh, the omega here is a random uh, value between 0 and the 1. When uh, the D is trained, right, we input model M model into the D. Then uh, we find the gradient of a model regularization term. Uh, if we see the previous one, uh, only we end up with the gradient here. Okay, otherwise just 0. That's only for the term of uh, model regularization, but also we have a data misfit, right? So we need also calculate, needed to calculate the gradient of a data misfit. Based on these two gradients, we generate a uh, model update, data M. So we now, the step five, the model M is updated based on this data M here, right? Because the model is updated, so the probability has been also changed. Therefore, the network needs to be retrained in the next iteration. So that's the uh, iterative uh, implementation. So let's uh, talk about uh, the network here. The network is a simple, uh, very simple network uh, with uh, four, uh, no, one, two, so the four, four uh, heating layers, and uh, this uh, a 40 connected network. And uh, actually, practically, it's very, very uh, easy to converge to get the, uh, the network D. Uh, input here could be three times one, the element M could be three times one vector or four times one, depends if you involved for three parameters, VP0, Epsilon, and the depth, or uh, four parameters, four-dimensional, VP0, Epsilon, Delta, and the depth. So this network will be trained for uh, three times for each iteration. Use uh, the model, counter model, and use uh, the well, uh, uh, well data samples, and they also use this uh, uh, interpre interpretation between these two uh, samples. And, the, and the, the loose function basically is this one. So you, you train this, but uh, the quotation for, uh, for the final uh, decision is to try to make this value to be maximum. So that's the, the uh, summary of uh, the network. So now let's talk about uh, FWI uh, test. We use this uh, uh, network regularization. I will show you a toy example. Let's uh, review that uh, for FWI, for uh, seismic inversion, the objective function is often defined by uh, the data misfit and the combined with the model uh, regularization, the data misfit and the regularization. That's the trade-off parameter. This model regularization term can be uh, formed through a network training. So that's, uh, I put an N here uh, as a, a representation. In this uh, work here, we proposed to use a network training to estimate uh, the W distance 
Western uh, distance for, for this uh, uh, FWI uh, involution. Let me uh, repeat the procedure here. Uh, the objective function is written like this, data misfit and uh, the minimal W here. However, the W here is W term, the distance term is obtained by uh, the uh, adversarial network training. Remember, this training actually is through so-called so maximization, right? Seems quite a conflict here. But the definition here, we want a minimum W. This uh, training maximization is for the D. It's not for W, okay? So we try to uh, distinguish them. And uh, the, the model M is updated by minimize the objective function. So that's uh, quite easy to be confused, but uh, I just emphasize that. And uh, of course, the procedure is carried out uh, iteratively. That's the, the general uh, procedure. I, I demonstrate this concept to use a toy model. Let's say this is a study model for the FWI, which is a, a smooth Wendy model. And uh, that B here, that's a true vertical velocity model. True vertical velocity is also Wendy. And uh, this is the true epsilon uh, model. Okay, in this case, we just assume data equal to zero. So we just uh, invert it for C, V, P, zero, and the epsilon, C, how it works. The start of is epsilon equals zero. So we can see the D here, the model uh, distribution. This axis is a VP, which is a, a vertical velocity. This axis is a epsilon. As I said, the epsilon equals zero, so you only have this line here, right? And the vertical axis here is a depth, so for individual depths. So this is the distribution of a starting model. And uh, the actual uh, reference, the, uh, the, uh, the whale log, give, you, give us the distribution like this, right? Not, epsilon is not equal to zero. Epsilon has a, a variation distribution around uh, a certain range. So, uh, also, it's not a linear with, with respect to the uh, VP, not a linear with respect to the depth. You can see the, the distribution here. So, the M here, the inversion, try to derive the distribution in D to, towards the distribution here. It's not equal to that, but close to that. That's the, uh, the M. Right. Let, let's see example uh, conventional FWI without uh, regularization. And uh, here, that's, uh, we have three rows here. That's uh, the result of 20 iteration, 50 iteration, and uh, 80 iterations. And uh, the first column here, that's the VP0, uh, the vertical velocity model. And uh, the second one here, that's the epsilon. Remember, uh, we assume delta equals zero, right? At the moment, which is epsilon, the VP0, uh, epsilon, and that this is the three-dimensional uh, distribution of uh, parameters. So the epsilon here, that's the vertical, uh, the vertical velocity and the steps, you can see, right? Two things here we can see, as I said, at least two problems at the beginning. One, the epsilon updating here, epsilon updating is not if, uh, effective, right? We do, not, we, we do not see anything like the previous slides. And, uh, also have a crosstalk uh, footprints here, because you can see here, you have a light, strong light, but here, strong light, strong, you can see that somehow they uh, match each other, right, in the opposite way, so that's the footprint, okay? That's for, this is the result for the uh, conventional FWI without regularization. But now, if we use the a regularization, see what happens. This, uh, again, 20 iterations, 40 iterations, and uh, 80 iterations. So we, ca we can see that the epsilon here, 
it's gradually, gradually uh, updated, right? You do see some uh, layered structure. And uh, typically, we want to see the last column here, the distribution of uh, epsilon gradually, gradually towards this shape. So it's very close to the, the distribution of a uh, well log data, right? That's the, the toy uh, example. So now we try to, uh, we apply this to a Mamusi uh, model. Right, this is a true Mamusi model, the vertical velocity, VP0. And that this uh, uh, assigned, uh, well, let's say the true epsilon parameters. And that this uh, assigned a uh, data uh, parameter. So there, there are three black uh, vertical lines here. They indicate uh, three wells here, okay? We assume we know the wells, okay? We do, uh, but, but because it's synthetic, we do not have well, but we assume we know the three wells here. Right, again, if we use a conventional FWR result, the regularization term, uh, the starting model is this, which is a VP0, and uh, but uh, we assume that at the very beginning, epsilon and the delta the two uh, and other parameters are uh, zero valued. Okay, so we only have this as an uh, initial model. So B here, this uh, the VP zero recovered by so-called conventional or isotropic FWI. Right, we do not invert for uh, anisotropic parameters. But here C, D, and the E, those are the recovered anisotropic FWI result from an anisotropic FWI. We have a VP not VP zero, uh, epsilon, and a delta. Right, we can see again there are two, prob two problems. When the crosstalk footprints here, you can see this sort of a shape here, somehow it can fit in back to here, right? So that's not really the distribution. But also we can see both epsilon and the delta are not effectively uh, updated by iteration, right? This just, just, uh, uh, illustrates the problems in the conventional FWI. Right, now we try to uh, use a data model uh, regularization term. So the first one, we use the error two regularization. Let's see how it looks like. So the P equal two here is the error two regularization. So, so here A is a, a, a prior model. We basically assume we know three wells, remember? And then we do the uh, interpretation, so we generate a prior model. And we also have a prior model epsilon and a prior model of a delta, so three wells here, okay? So this uh, D here basically uh, shows the uncertainty, model uncertainties, right? Next to the well, we have a smaller uncertainty, which means a higher sanity, yeah? And uh, uh, but uh, offset from, uh, from the well, you have a gradually, gradually higher uncertainties. The result after the FWI inversion, so this is, those are the, the models recovered by FWI. So first of all, because we use error two norm uh, model regularization, the uh, footprints actually reduce uh, in this uh, VP0 uh, result, right? And the epsilon and data both are better updated. Okay. There are some uh, artifacts, right? Because the uh, prior model is uh, not accurate. So that's, we still have some artifacts from uh, this result you can see. Uh, sort of uh, the shadow here, okay? That's the, the conventional error two norm uh, regularization. Right, we can compare this to the previous one, you can see that the result, well, start to get some result, but it's a far away from the true. Okay, now we use a network uh, regularization term. Again, we have a the inversion result, that's a VP0. This is the epsilon uh, 
and that this is a delta. You can see both epsilon and delta are updated, uh, updated effectively, right? And the, the crosstalk fit point, for example, between here and here is a really minor, so that's a, a quite a good uh, result. Let's compare again to the true model, right? The result seems uh, uh, acceptable. Okay, so how we can get this? Why we get this uh, result better than a uh, uh, conventional one? Let's see the difference in terms of uh, the gradient here. Okay, so we can see the gradient if we use an error 2 norm uh, as a regularization term. The gradient does not show you uh, well, really the direction of, uh, of updating. Okay, but uh, when you use a, a network term uh, as a regularization uh, term, you can see the gradient. Gradient really means the negative direction of a model update, right? That's the concept of inversion. The gradient gives a negative direction of uh, uh, update. Just, okay, that's the concept here. You can see this uh, gradients somehow indicates uh, like a track of a true model, right? Quite similar. In summary, we can see the key uh, points here, we try to generate a model which has a distribution very close to the uh, wear log distribution. Let's see here, the first column here, that's the starting model. Remember, we assume epsilon zero, data zero. We have a, a vertical velocity here. And uh, because we know it's a four dimensional, we, we, we do present a, a depth here, the three parameters, uh, VP zero, uh, delta, and epsilon and delta. That's a starting model. But here, we use a uh, error two norm regularization. And uh, at the beginning, we have a uh, Epsilon, delta, VP, but after the inversion, you can see we somehow recover the part of uh, Epsilon value and the delta, right? That's the uh, error two norm results. But this one is the one uh, we propose here. We use a uh, uh, network to trade the minimum uh, distance between two, uh, the properties. So this result, the Epsilon model, delta model this way. Uh, the regularization you get this, right? The finally, this is the well uh, results, okay? You can see this one gradually towards this. That's the, the uh, process. So uh, part of our, let me uh, emphasize some uh, uh, properties, uh, in attractive, uh, attractive properties of this uh, method. First of all, the regularization term is defined in the model space, right? Although we use uh, the data from a way log, but it's defined in the model space. So this is a statistical regularization, as I said at the very beginning. The regularization term is, we call it uh, the W distance here, which is uh, uh, the, the distance between these two properties, and the, which effectively draw what we do, which are get the P model towards the P well. Okay, remember here, we use a maximization to get the, the result, get the D, and then we work out the, the, the result. The one with advantages this method does not require expressive form of a probability P model and the P well, right? So therefore it works for high uh, dimensional and uh, uh, complex distributions. This method can be uh, potentially used to regularize other inversions, okay, uh, as long as we have uh, uh, prior uh, knowledges regarding to the, uh, the parameter distributions. However, the effectiveness of this method is limited. Uh, if the distribution P well, in this case, is not a good representation of a true model, right, because this, uh, we try to uh, match P model to the P well, right? So if P well is not a good representation, of course the results are not good, 
So how we improve that? We can improve this by uh, using some uh, uh, sophisticated well uh, extrapolation methods, right? And guided by some uh, geological information and the subsurface uh, 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 lithological properties, the lithological information, that's the, the improvement. For the detail, uh, you can uh, go, welcome to go to see this, uh, my student's paper, just published uh, recently in, uh, in uh, Geophysics. That's uh, uh, my presentation, so welcome for any questions or comments, please. My name is Leo Soares from Repsol Sinopec, Brazil. I'd like to know uh, if you have already tested in real data. Okay. <laughs> I'm speaking English. Uh, I'd like to know if you already tested this method in real data, 3D data also. Uh. We actually, well, in the middle of processing, we use we uh, use the real data from uh, Gulf of Mexico to image it for the subsort uh, subsort uh, well, structure. And the results were good. The results uh, actually quite uh, promising. Actually, it's quite good. But the limit, uh, I, I actually mentioned the one of the limitations because they do not have a deep well to give us uh, the good uh, the guidance. I mean, the whale lock information. Yeah, but uh, as long as we have uh, the whale lock information, that, that's part of it really good. So we do have uh, the clear, the bottom image of, uh, of a soft body, yeah. Sorry, just more, one more question. This uh, algorithm is uh, the, the Imperial College property or it's public? How can we use it? Uh, as I said, I have a consortium. That's, uh, uh, open to the, the, op the source open to the other sponsors, but for the real data image, we, we do need a permission from individual company, but uh, uh, in any case, if we are yeah, interested, uh, I, I think it's probably easy. We can distribute a student version of, uh, of uh, the, uh, the software. You, okay. see, you see the fundamental uh, the structures in C and C++. Okay, thank you. Okay, so a uh, nice presentation, uh, Professor. Uh, I'm uh, Martin Teagle from uh, Campinas. And uh, my question is, as I would like to, you to comment a little bit of the role of the Lipschitz condition, F. I don't understand what is, uh, what is the role of F. Is it known? Is it not known? And how to, to guarantee that this uh, condition is fulfilled? In the uh, general uh, literature, it, uh, typically in the machine learning, they use uh, lip F to represent that uh, uh, lip uh, condition. But here, I think uh, I try to uh, try to make it more uh, uh, acceptable for, for people who are not familiar with that. I use uh, the gradient of F. First of all, the, the requirement is if we have a f function, any f function, right? Like uh, if we say f function, we vary from here to this, this point to this point. Uh, but it's a normalized by the distance between these two points, or between the two samples. And the, the, the ratio we call the normalized, or in the, in the final difference way that we call it uh, gradient, right? The ratio must be less than one. Right? So that means if we're talking about normalizer, let's say the angle less than the 45 degree, that's it. But actually it's not the smallest beta because actually they need a result close to one. So this is why we have the actual term. We have a gradient minus one towards zero. So you make sure that the function is gradually, gradually approach one. So that means you, we, we want the more data distribution have a very strong variation. Very strong variation, but uh, of course, within the, the upper bound and the lower bound, the upper bound is one, lower bound also is one, so it's closed down. So it's, instead of we have a from zero to one, zero to one, right, but they say we, we always follow that way. So that's the continuity uh, requirement. Uh, this is quite uh, uh, tricky here because uh, 
if we do not have enough perturbation of f, you cannot finally generate the complicated enough uh, distribution for the for the final model, final solution. So you need make uh, make sure you have uh, enough perturbation in terms of f value, but not uh, extremely uh, uh, oscillated. You need to follow that row close to one. That's the physical uh, concept here. Thank you.